the whole idea of being able to run GameCube on your phone is something I've looked into before, but that was years ago and things were very different. It was thanks to a recent comment on one of my other videos that led me to explore this once again. Getting this emulation set up on your phone is one of the easiest emulation setups I've ever experienced. All you have to do is go to the Play Store and download Dolphin. Just download it from the Play Store and then take one of your GameCube ROMs that you've saved legally. If you're looking for a video how to do that, make sure to check out this one up over here. And download that either to your phone's internal memory or your micro SD card. And then all that's left to do is point Dolphin to where you have all of your games saved and then it builds a library and you just click on one and you can start playing just with that. I expect the game that most people will be wanting to play is Super Smash Bros. Melee. And it doesn't really run that smoothly, which is a huge disappointment. So it does run, it's just really slow. But even if it did work perfectly, there's some things that you just might not think about initially, such as having all the controls on the screen. Now, as long as the camera is staying centered on your character, that shouldn't be much of a problem. But if your controls are off here to the sides, and one of the players is literally under your thumb, he's going to have an advantage because you physically can't see him. Another popular game I expect people will be interested in is Mario Kart Double Dash. Now, you won't be able to double cart with someone because you can't do multiplayer on just one phone. There's not enough space on the screen for two controllers anyway. But Mario Kart does run kind of close to a good enough speed to where you could play it. But even at 150cc, I still found the game kind of boring and still a little bit slower than I would like. Now, if you're playing with your phone on a table, the controls aren't that much of an issue because you can just have your pointer finger on the A button for gas and then use your middle finger to hold R and you can still drift, power slide, whatever you want to call it. But if you're looking for a fantastic example of a game that's not super demanding that would run on your Android device, look no further than Animal Crossing. Now technically it doesn't run at 100% speed all the time, but this is Animal Crossing, one of the slowest games of all time, and it doesn't matter if it takes you two minutes to get from one end of the map to the other, because nothing will have happened in the meantime. Also, the audio is still kind of garbled due to the emulation speed speeding up and slowing down, but it's not like any of those cute, adorable woodland creatures have anything useful to say anyway. One of the games that I knew would be bad, but not just how bad it was going to be, is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, one of my favorite games of all time. Now, this is the Windows XP disc, which runs perfectly fine on low-end hardware like this. But even on my i7 laptop with a GTX 1070 or my Threadripper desktop at home with a 1080 Ti, none of these Windows machines running at 4 plus gigahertz can get this to run from the GameCube side of things if I were to emulate it. And it is basically the same story on mobile. Here is just how painful this game is. I'm going to show you not a whole race because that would take over half an hour, but I will show you just the beginning of one of the races in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. As you can see, it's pretty cringy. As for my personal favorite GameCube game, that would be Pikmin 2. Pikmin 2 runs darn near 100% emulation speed basically all of the time. And whenever the audio does get garbled from a little bit of a slowdown, it's not like there was any important information being communicated to the player through the audio anyway. So Pikmin 2, it's basically as good as having a portable version of the GameCube with you. So in summary, I have Two games that work what I would consider perfectly well, Animal Crossing and Pikmin 2. So what advantages, if any, do I get from having these work well on mobile when I have at my disposal an i7-1070 laptop with a 102Hz overclocked G-Sync display and my Threadripper 1080 Ti machine at home, especially because on Windows I can 
boost the graphics and play with an actual controller. Well, basically, it's playtime. One of the videos I did a year ago, I kind of realized while making it that a laptop makes more sense than a gaming desktop because you can take this with you gaming in twice as many places twice as often. So it gets you more playtime. And a phone does that even better. A phone can go with you on long road trips. You can take it on a plane with a battery pack and, you know, a 17 inch laptop. I have tried gaming on a plane with it. It did not work. It was just too big for the tray table and yeah. And something I've kind of noticed looking back is that of all my game playtime in the last month with the little free time I have every now and again, I spent more than half of that playtime on those two games on my phone. If you don't know how to save your own copies of GameCube games to your computer, make sure to check out this video here. If you're looking for just how good you can enhance the graphics of GameCube if you're playing on a high-end PC, then check out this video over here. I'm going to go make some more videos, but until then, check out some of these ones over here, and I'll see you in the next one.